What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of career mode. This is episode number 63 and we start this days of stuff on the back of our win. Our first game with Bayern, a 2-1 victory at home to SV Darmstadt. A bit of an unconvincing victory if I'll be totally honest here. I needed bailing out in the final 15 minutes as well but did manage to come through with our first victory on match day one. And following that, the deal has gone through. He just played his final game for Bayern Munich. And Kingsley Coman is off to Naples for £71 million as he'll play under Spalletti. So I said when I arrived, no one was safe. Coman gone. The 30-year-old, 87-rated winger now needs replacing. And after that sale, plus the season ticket money we had and the other sales that have gone through as well, we are just over £100 million to find a replacement for the French winger. And I know exactly who I wanted. Yeah, I passed up the chance to buy him in the last episode in favour of Victor Osimen. After his brace on the opening day, I think I made the right choice. But then I thought, hey, why don't I get him anyway and play him on the wing? Karim Adeyemi, who has moved on from Borussia Dortmund to Lyon in this save. I said, come back to the Bundesliga. You know Bayern like to sign all those best players from Dortmund as the years go by. This time via Olympic Lyon. I said to the French Giants, he, you know, he doesn't want to play in Ligue 1. He wants to come back home. I know he does. And for £84 million, Lyon accepted the deal. And to me... This is going to be an absolutely class signing because Kareem Adeyemi, when you look at his stats here, as a striker, there's no doubt about it, he will get you goals. But to me, with this Bayern team, you know I like my wingers to be able to score, be inside forwards. Brennan Johnson always scored so many goals for me on the left-hand side with Nottingham Forest. Diaby got a lot last year at the city ground as well, cutting in from the right. If you look at Kareem Adeyemi's stats, I actually believe personally... That's the role he'd be best at as an inside forward. Now, playing up top, yeah, of course he could do that, no doubt about it. But Osimo is going to lead our line, of course. To me, I think Kareem in this 4 2 3 1 could do a pretty solid job on that right hand side. Also, we brought in Musiala. He's going to play left mid for us with that right foot to cut inside. We changed his position. I only took a couple of weeks there. I, I think for Kareem, it's going to be the same thing. We'll convert him to a right midfielder, have him stepping in to shoot on that left foot of his. And I reckon he'll bang in a load of goals as well. Because, again, he's absolutely rapid. He's an amazing dribbler. Four-star skill moves. Flair trait. High-medium work rates. Yeah, I, I, I don't really see how this guy couldn't work as a right midfielder. I think he'd do the job fine. Medium defensive work rate. That's not too bad on that flank as well. So, I, I think Kareem, personally, will be better as a winger than a striker. Inside forward, I think he'd do a brilliant Brilliant job there. So, yep, Addy Amy in, and again for 80, was it 84 million? I think it was 83 million, something like that. It's a brilliant, brilliant signing, and I'm buzzing with that. I think him on the right and Musiala on the left, right on on time. Musiala's position change gets completed here. We're getting the wide midfield development plan to get the attacking work right up to high. I think we're going to score so many goals this season, obviously. Osimhen spearheading the attack, Verts right behind, and then on the left-hand side, you've got Musiala. On the right, you've got Adi Amy. And Graven Birch can offer a bit going forward as well, alongside Joshua Kimmich. I, I think we're going to score a lot of goals this season as well with Davis and the coup as our wing backs too. We're not the top scorers this year. We have disappointed ourselves. So I'm buzzing with that. Kareem is in and he'll replace Kingsley Cohen. So first game of this episode, first away day as well. And this is a brilliant team for a Kareem, my man. FC Cologne, really, really sick stadium. They've got one of, my coolest, one of the coolest stadiums in the game as well. Really, really cool stadium. Taking them on first away day with Bayern Munich here. And second game of the season, I was thinking, okay, all right. I was reasonably unconvincing against Darmstadt. We did come through with a victory. To be honest here, I don't mind if we win by one goal in every single game. Yeah, want to be a top scorer this season, but most importantly, we want the silverware. Win every game, you'll get it. So, taking on Cologne, perfect start here. Victor or Seaman, yeah, no doubt about it. Despite the signing of Adi Amy, Victor's still going to lead my line. Three goals in two games for the Nigerian striker. He don't need a grace period here. He's already hit the ground running. So, yeah, Bayern in front early. Lambert had to make a really good save, though, soon after to still keep us leading by a goal. He's already made two big saves for me this season, as we still have the, uh, the advantage. Here, but 33 minutes in, well, he doesn't have the injury prone tag, but twice in a row now, 
or Siemens gone down and stayed down as well. Just like on match day one, he would stay on there and would soldier on. Eventually, I'll take him off midway through the second half, but still another injury for Victor or Seaman. And as you'll see in a moment, a little bit more serious than the bruise he got on match day one, but still leading by a goal, trying to close the game out. How did this ball stay out with 16 minutes on the clock? Bar rattling and then a clearance off the line as we still hold on to a slender one goal lead and there were two minutes to go. Well, I found my Manuel Neuer successor. First clean sheet in Bayern Munich colours for Lambert. Brilliant save late on. He made two really important ones in this game as we hold on to the one goal victory. So back to back games where we only scrape through by a single goal. But we will take it. It's back-to-back -back wins to start the season off. Again, once again, not exactly the most convincing of wins, but I'm going to take it. 1-0 the final score. But proof right there, it's going to take some time for all of our new signings to gel. A few of which are playing in new positions. Bakul at right back. Adi Amy's now right mid. Musial is left mid as well. It's going to take a time for the lads to gel, but... Even so, we got back-to-back -back wins, so we just about started off exactly how we wanted to, but not in the most convincing of fashions. Oh, Seaman, as you'll see, did get a sprain. It'll be done for four weeks. We'll miss the Der Klassiker, the first one uh, with Bayern Munich. And as you'll see now, this is the bonus of having Adi Amy in this team because he might be a little bit lighter striker, but he can play there. You know, he can move him up there. Vert could play as a false nine. Max Tillman's being converted to striker. We've got the youngster tell as well. We might have not have that much depth, but I think whoever fills in at striker will get us some goals in this team. So, following that, draw for the Champions League group stage, where Bayern Munich have got... I'll take it. Group B, Monaco, Celtic... BSC Young Boys. Yep, I will take it. We've avoided a big European giant. Last season, Bayern were knocked out of the group stage in third place. Ended up being knocked out by Dortmund in the quarters of the Europa League when they went into that competition. This year, we haven't got to win it. We don't need to win it. Now, here at Bayern, we know our objective is primarily domestically. Worry about Europe next season, but they do still say get to the final of the board. So I'll do my best to get to the final, back-to-back -back CL finals. I'd love to go all the way to win it. We certainly got the team to do that as well, but most importantly, got to do better than last year. Knocked out in the group stage in third place. Yeah, the group we got there, Monaco, Celtic, BSC, Young Boys. If we get knocked out of this group, well, regardless of how we're getting on domestically, I ain't going to survive after spending all this money. That'll be embarrassing. Anyway, second and final game of today's episode, back home for match day three at the Allianz Arena. First Dua Classic here with Bayern Munich. Super excited for this one. Bayern Dortmund games are always brilliant. Did you see the game they had this year? The 2-2, Dortmund, Le Dortmund leveling it right at the end. The scenes when they scored that stoppage time equaliser was incredible. Always my favourite game to watch in the Bundesliga Bayern versus Dortmund I'm sure it is for a lot of neutrals really but even so taking on Dortmund we had the early lead in the game Joshua Kimmich who's captain for me gets our first goal of the game open the score and making it 1-0 and really in this one Dortmund didn't really challenge at all with 20 minutes to go well this was just like no this was just ridiculous we won ourselves a penalty here but this was this was a ludicrous decision won a penalty and, and, and like you know me like you know I just I <laughs> For me, like realism is, you know, quite important. Not, it's not the, it's not the only and primary goal of this save, but it is still quite important. That was just ridiculous. I mean, sometimes fouls are woefully given or ignored by the referee in FIFA, and that is one of the worst I've ever seen. Quite literally, that's one of the worst I've ever seen. In what well was that a penalty? No way was I going to score that. That would have been embarrassing. But I didn't think I was going to regret missing that penalty on purpose because, quite frankly, we were in complete control. We were still leading by a goal. Dortmund hadn't threatened Lambert whatsoever in the game with 15 minutes to go. Well, when I signed him, I said, keep your eyes on this young man. We want a German core. We want some young talent. He's got potential to be special. I said he can play literally anywhere. Levin Bauer. First goal for Bayern Munich. I have no idea where this guy should be playing, but he needs the game time, man. He is absolutely sick. Got the assist for Kimmich's goal. Scored the dagger as we hold on to the win. 2-0 the final score. Like I said, didn't really care about the penalty because I knew I was going to regret it. I, I felt for sure I'd hold on to the win, which we did. Very comfortable victory in our first year Classica. 2-0 the final score, but this guy... 
I don't know where to play him, man. I really don't. I think box to box is his best draw. It's going to be hard to get him game time, though, with Graven, Birch, and Kimmich practically always going to be starting. But he is sick, and he was brilliant in that game as well. The 18 year old wonder kid with a man in a match display. Free wins from free for Bayern. Our first proper good victory of the season so far. Nine points from nine. I wouldn't exactly say we've been at our best so far, but we are where we need to be come the end of the season, top of the table. But that wins this episode of Krimmer, guys. Massive thank you for watching. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, then please do drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day, and I'll see you for transfer deadline day, where we should make some more signings with this Bayern Munich team to close out a feisty and fiery first window in charge very soon.